Okay, welcome. Welcome one more time. Welcome everyone. Welcome to my free webinar about healthy boundaries in the relationship. And I prepared a uh, demo for you, um, slideshow. And before we're gonna start, I would like to give you an overview of what um, I'm gonna talk about on this free webinar. So we're gonna talk about healthy boundaries and self-worthiness. I will talk about 10 reasons why it is so difficult to defend your opinion and your interest. We're gonna talk about feelings of shame and feelings of guilt, a fear that others won't understand me and fear of being judged. I will talk about a reason why it's so hard to share your true feelings and emotions with your friends and your family members. We're going to discuss 10 reasons uh, that are stopping people from creating boundaries. And I will share with you information about two types of boundaries, personal boundaries, reactive and proactive. Which one do you use in your real life? Then we're going to do an exercise. It's going to be a meditative guided meditation exercise, which is called My Inner House. And this uh, exercise will help you to see and to evaluate your boundaries. And then, of course, I will um, tell you what you can do to work on your boundaries and how can you learn uh, how to say no in productive way, in a healthy way. And uh, today's webinar is a part of the online training healing your inner child today it will be theory and one exercise at the end of the webinar uh, in october i'm gonna have an online workshop uh, for eight weeks we're gonna talk about our inner child and three weeks uh, out of eight weeks we're gonna work on healthy boundaries theory is good and you should know why you cannot say no or how um, people um, create healthy boundaries but theory is not enough you actually need to do exercises and to work on your healthy boundaries so when next time somebody is rude to you you know what to do so during this online training three weeks out of eight we will talk and do exercises for healthy boundaries and today it's going to be theory plus one guided meditation at the end and during the online training in october uh, i will you will learn how to say no you will practice specific words specific phrases that you can use at work with your friends and with your family you will learn four ways to respond to rudeness and five ways to find the solution in any situation uh, so today's webinar uh, please say hi in chat if you were able to join me after all these technical difficulties. Mm, I'm happy that you are here. I'm happy that you are with me. Let me know where you are from. Uh, what would you like to learn to, from today's webinar? Why are you interested in this topic? Why are you here? And I do not believe in coincidence. Uh, if you are here, then you are supposed to be here. So welcome. And if you don't know me, my name is Elena Semenek, E-L-E-N-A. You can see it uh, on the right side of your screen, Elena Semenek. I am a psychologist and a life coach. I am Russian. Originally, I'm from Russia. Now, I live in the U.S., in Los Angeles. I am uh, the founder of Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. I have my YouTube channel. Welcome. And here I organize free webinars and uh, I um, upload free videos that will help you to be uh, more successful in life, um, to create happier, uh, happy life and to create healthy relationship in your life. I graduate as a psychologist as a social and political psychologist from the Ural State University in Russia in 2004. And uh, I received a bachelor degree in psychology in 2005. And within the last 15 years, I've been studying different methods of psychology, including NLP. Uh, this is the branch of psychology 
which is uh, in simple words, um, it's all about our behavior patterns, uh, thinking errors, false logic, belief system, and how we can reprogram our brain to be um, happy to have successful, abundant life. Basically, NLP is uh, all about what Tony Robbins is offering. Uh, then I've been learning family psychology and family constellations. This is uh, about the relationship within the family, relationship between mother, father, children, husband, wife, grandparents, and why do we copy our parents and how to release ourselves from a uh, baggage that our family gave us and how to be build your own life, how to be free. And I graduated lately, uh, it's like two years ago, I graduated from the Initiation Institute of Male and Female Maturity, which studies family relationship, romantic relationship, and relationship within yourself. I specialize in childhood trauma, marriage counseling, uh, all types of addictions, uh, including overweight problems, because uh, overweight is eating addiction. I specialize in romantic relationship, how to find a partner um, about a toxic relationship, unrequited life, uh, love, a long distance relationship and family relationship, basically relationship with your parents, kids and relatives. And uh, today we're going to talk about 10 reasons, 10 reasons why people can't create healthy boundaries. And the first reason is parental message to be a nice girl or a nice boy. And all of us heard uh, such words as don't be rude, be nice to people, be a good girl, be a nice girl. Uh, boys are not supposed to cry. And uh, parents told us to see nice side in everything. And this is true. This is a good parental message to, to notice good things in life. And it's important. But at the same time, we also must learn how to see the abusive nature, the negative qualities in people. And we all must learn how to say no and how to walk away without feelings of guilt or shame. And this is what... Uh, our parents often forget. They did not teach us those things. Same in school, all teachers were teaching us that we should respect each other, to be kind to each other. And parents, grandparents, teachers, uh, mentors, they all teach us how to be nice. And all of them forget about other side, about the other important element which is how to say no. And all those people did this not because they don't love us. They did, did it out of big love because, because of two reasons. The first reason, they wanted us to be successful. They wanted us to have friends in life. They wanted us to be the part of the society, to be able to have a good relationship at work with our co-workers, with neighbors, with people around us. They wanted us to be a good person. And the second reason why they did not teach us how to notice the abusive part, how to say no, because they don't know how to do it themselves. They have no idea how to create healthy boundaries. They have no idea which words to use. They don't know how to behave when somebody is rude to you and how could have they taught us something that they did not know themselves uh let's discuss signs of a good girl syndrome uh when a person is saying i don't want to create conflicts i don't want to upset anybody i don't want to hurt another person's feelings or if I say no, if I say something, people won't invite me again. Or another phrase like, if I say no, they are not going to be my friends anymore. If I say no, I'm going to lose my job. If I say, uh, if I, um, say no, uh, they will get mad at me. So all those words are signs of a good girl syndrome. And now imagine 
What would happen if a wolf mother taught her young pups to be nice with everyone, including predators? All of them are gonna die. All of them. All pups. This is uh, also uh, related to us. If we're gonna be nice to everybody and everyone, our life is gonna be miserable. We're gonna sacrifice ourselves uh, in order to have a good relationship with others, in order to keep the job, in order to not to create conflicts, or we're afraid to that our friends, our husband, our children will leave us. So this is why it's so important to know how to say no properly. It is extremely important to learn how to create healthy boundaries. And uh, it, is, it is extremely important to see the difference between predators and everyone else. I have a video uh, which is called the Good Girl Syndrome and I will leave the link below this webinar. Uh, the video is absolutely free, it's on my YouTube. And if this is uh, something that you would like to learn more and investigate, I also give uh, an advice what to do, how to start uh, getting rid of this syndrome so the video will be linked uh the video uh, the link to this video will be below uh the seminar in the description of this video so let's talk about the second reason the second reason why people can't create healthy boundaries is a belief uh that this world is a wonderful place to live, a fantasy of a paradise world. And this world is a wonderful place to live, but I'm talking about the fantasy of a paradise world. And I will explain uh, right now what I mean by that. So there are rude people and there are kind people. There are black and white. There is black and white in life. There is a day and night. Every person has a bad and good qualities. If a person uh, is rude to you. You should not tolerate it just because he was good to, to you yesterday. We want to live in the illusion that bad things happen to others and not to us. We want to believe that another person did not mean to be rude. And we, actually we ourselves, create excuses for other people when they are rude to us. In reality, we're just afraid to stand up for ourselves. We prefer to live in the illusion of a paradise world. We take our sunglasses, we put them on, and we live in this illusion that the world is an amazing place and bad things is not, are not going to happen to me. The third reason why people can't create healthy boundaries is because we ignore obvious signs of predators and the fairy tale blue beard chapter two of the book women who run with the wolves shows that the predator has a blue color beard and uh, this is a sign basically a red flag that something is wrong something is awkward this sign is in front of our eyes and we see it every day but we ignore it we want to acquire the person. We tell ourselves and others that the person is good, especially if this person is our partner, if this person is our mother, father, or our best friend. And we want and we will find hundreds of reasons why this person is nice, or why this person did not mean bad things that he did. And what we should do instead, instead we should protect ourselves and we should create a healthy boundaries. We need to know how to say no and how to walk away if, uh, if the person cannot hear our no. Fourth reason, reason number four why people can create healthy boundaries is the belief that aggression is bad. Again, all comes from our childhood and um, we have a belief and we've heard those words from our parents, teachers that you should not be angry, you should not raise your voice, you should not be rude to other people. If you cannot say uh, something good, you should keep your mouth shut. 
So we were taught to hide our anger, keep our emotions to ourselves. No one has taught us how to manage our anger. No one has taught us how to use it in a healthy way. Uh, we don't have to avoid our feelings. We don't have to avoid our emotions. We have to learn how to release our aggression, how to use it in a healthy way. And aggression is a good thing. If you know how to uh, transform, how to manage your aggression, then you can achieve your goals and you can achieve uh, your dreams. Aggression is the signal that some somebody is crossing our boundaries. When you feel angry, when you just at the beginning of your aggression, right? Uh, this is the signal for you that something is wrong. Something is not right. Somebody is crossing my boundaries. So you have to be in touch with your aggression. You need to know how to connect to your uh, negative feelings so you can notice them right away. And of course, aggression helps us to overcome fears, achieve our goals and reach and create the life that we want. But we have a belief that aggression is bad. That is one of the reasons why we cannot create healthy boundaries. Uh, reason number five. We cannot create healthy boundaries because when we talk to our friends and family, often they lie to us. They do not tell us the truth. When we tell uh, our friends something that worries us, often uh, our friends won't tell us the truth because they don't want to take responsibility for the decisions that we make. Uh, for example, what if I say something and then my friend will break up with her husband or boyfriend? I don't want to be responsible in this decision. What if I say something and my friend is going to have a huge fight with her mother and then her mother will get a heart attack? After my advice, I don't want to be in this position. What if I uh, tell her that her boss is a terrible guy and sh he should not treat her this way, so she should quit her job? And what if she will do this and then blame me for that? I don't want to be blamed for the uh, serious decisions in my friend's life. That's why friends don't tell us the truth. Uh, often friends uh, don't want to lose us. They don't want to lose our relationship. They want to be our friends and that's it. And uh, they will try to convince us to ignore bad things. They will uh, tell us to look to the bright side and they will advise us not to take things personally. Example, um, my ex-boyfriend told me that he wants to have uh, a child with me. He said, I, wanted, I want to have a child with you. I think you're going to be a terrific mother, but I'm not going to marry you. Uh, we're going to just live together and have a child. And then I asked him, I said, like, why don't you want to marry me? He told me because I don't believe in marriages. I just simply don't believe in marriages. So I went to my friend and I shared this information and she told me not to take it personally. She said, uh, because he wants uh, a child with you, this is the most important. Uh, so it's not about you, it's just he doesn't believe in marriage, it is normal. And luckily I was not convinced. So I went back to my ex-boyfriend ex and uh, I started bugging him and I started asking questions. And I asked him, um, how do you see us in 5, 7, 10 years? And he told me, uh, do not rush. He said, uh, let's do it step by step. Uh, you will move in with me. We're going to sell your condo. We're going to have a baby. You're going to be an amazing mother. I'm going to be a dad. And like, we'll see. In two, three years, we'll see. How can we know what's going to happen in two, three years? And when I said no, I said like, um, so you want to sell my condo? You want to move in with me? But you don't really see us in five, ten years together. You... You're saying, we'll see. And he said, like, yes, because how can you know what is going to happen in two, three years? 
And basically when I told him that uh, I'm not happy about this decision, I really want to be with you, but um, something is bugging me. Then a uh, few weeks later, he told me that he really wants to be a father. It's a stage in his life when he's ready to be a father. And he told me that he want me to be his surrogate mother for his baby because he thinks that I'm gonna be a terrific mother. And finally, I realized that he was a narcissist uh, and all the time he was thinking only about himself and he found a good girl who can take care of his baby without any obligations. So when a person cannot clearly explain his opinion, this is a sign of a predator, a man with a blue beard. The phrase, I don't believe in marriage or will see, is not an answer. Having a family, uh, creating, uh, like living together, uh, selling properties, uh, it should be a serious decision. This is not a game. This is not believe it or not game. This is a serious decision. So if uh, a guy does not offer you an exclusive relationship, if he does not want to talk to you about uh, your future, if he is not planning anything for your future, then he does not take you seriously. A relationship, any relationship should have boundaries. Boundaries help us to uh, protect our relationship. Boundaries help us to treat each other with love, respect and care. If we don't have boundaries, then at the end we're gonna be either um, in a toxic relationship or we're gonna be disappointed and we're not gonna be happy. And the truth is that my friend, when she gave me this advice, don't take it personally, of course she did not mean bad things. Of course not. And uh, often we choose friends who are like us, friends who don't know how to create healthy boundaries, friends who also believe in the fantasy of a paradise world uh, that bad things are not going to happen to me. Uh, so friends who also don't know how to notice those red flags. And that's why after talking to my friend and after going through painful breakup, I uh, found a therapist. I found a psychologist and they went to personal therapy where I discussed my problems, my feelings. And that's why we need a therapist. Our friend cannot replace a therapist, cannot replace a psychologist. A professional person who knows uh, psychology, who can teach you those red flags, it's not just the person who will understand what is happening to you. It's not just the person who will provide you care and support. But this is also a person who will guide you and who will help you to uh, to um, to grow. To this person will help you and will uh, let you um, will teach you how to deal with this situation, how not to get uh, how how to leave the situation, and uh, a professional person will teach you how what to do so you're not gonna end up in similar relationship again and again and again. Uh, who agrees to that? Please write in chat. Who uh, felt something similar? And um, if you are going to watch this uh, webinar uh, later, if you are not uh, present during the live broadcast, please let me know in comments if you can uh, agree, relate to that. If you had something similar when you talk to your friend and you know that your friends are not telling you the truth. And when you feel lonely, when you feel like you have a uh, very painful heart situation and you have nobody to talk to it about or, or if you are talking to the person then people are telling you that you should ignore those signs that you taking it personally and you're making a big deal out of nothing please let me know if this is something that you can relate to 
Okay, reason number six, why people can't create healthy boundaries. And reason number six is because we are afraid to be judged by a predator. Often we don't want to say no because we are afraid that the person will call us name, that the person will say that it was a joke and we did not get it. Mm, or a person uh, might say that we are making a big deal out of nothing. Or a person might uh, call us a baby and tell us that we should grow up and don't be so sensitive. So a lot of times we don't know what is right and what is wrong. And a lot of times we are afraid of being judged and we don't want to feel guilty or feel shame. And when we uh, are in a relationship with abusive people, when we are in toxic relationship, of course, they will use feelings of shame and guilt to manipulate us. This is their number one tool that they can use to control us. And unfortunately, that is why we cannot say no. Reason number seven, we cannot say no, we cannot create healthy boundaries because we are afraid to be judged by our friends and family. We don't want to feel ashamed of our life. Often we don't ask for help because we are afraid that once our friends find out the truth about our mother, father, boyfriend, husband, child, they will judge us or they will feel sorry for us and we don't want to be ashamed of our life or of our family and they want to tell you another story uh, of my life the story about my father uh, uh, approximately i think five years ago my brother uh, had um, a wedding and i have uh, a brother and i have uh, half a sister so my brother had a wedding and before the wedding ceremony i went to the ladies room and when i was um, coming from the ladies room i uh, saw my father and he looked at me and said like wow you look terrific you are so beautiful wow and at that moment i felt amazing i i was like so happy uh this uh, was such a nice words that i did not hear from my father for years and then uh, i look at him and notice that something is not right something is awkward i felt like he was looking not at me but he was looking through me and then i turned my head back and i saw my younger sister behind me she was standing right behind me and i realized that he was saying those words to her he completely ignored me he did not even notice me i was standing in front of her but he was talking to her through me i felt terrible i i felt like um Oh, it's very hard even to explain and find words how bad it was. I, I wanted to scream, I wanted to cry, but because it was my brother's wedding, because it was right before the ceremony, I could not even say anything. I was completely in shock. I And I am a psychologist. I've learned all those techniques, all those things. But at that moment i felt like a child uh, a child that was abandoned by the father i was uh, able to kind of ignore it and uh, i went to the wedding we celebrated the wedding but during the whole wedding those painful feelings were inside of me and when i came back to the united states i talked to my friend and i told her how how awful i felt uh in russia and my friend told me like oh my god he should not do it this is terrible i can't believe your father did it i can't believe that he actually did it like oh my god and instead of giving me emotional support my friend told me how bad my father is how terrible 
he is and what an awful and uh, evil person my father is. And I already felt bad, but after her words, it was even worse. And I began to protect my father. I created excuses for him. I was saying that, you know what, probably because my parents uh, divorced, I was not uh, close with my father as much as my sister. That's why uh, he, um, that's why he ignored me. That's why like when he saw her, it was like his initial reaction. And I was trying to find excuses for my father. And the more I was trying to protect him, the more she was keeping saying how terrible he is. After talking to my friend, I felt even worse than before. And from that day, I stopped sharing my deepest feelings with my friends and my family members. I found a therapist. And after uh, working uh, with my therapist, uh, now I can talk about my childhood. Now I can share with you my um, experience and I don't feel ashamed. I don't feel bad. I don't feel that um, I am a victim. I was able to work on this problem. And please let me know in chat or in comments below the video if you had uh, something similar in your life. Uh, let me know if you know how it is to feel uh, when somebody um, is saying bad things about your family. Although it's true, you know that your father, mother, boyfriend, grandfather is an evil person. But when you hear it from your close friends, uh, it's even worse. Please let me know if you can relate to that and uh, if you were able to work on this issue. So often our friends don't know how to give emotional support. Again, I still friend with this uh, girl. I like her. We are very close. I like as close as we can be, right? So I respect her and I know that again, she did not mean to be rude. She did not... Um, wanted to offend me often our friends they just don't know how to give emotional support and they don't know how to say it they don't know what to say it and that's why we need a therapist or that's why a friend cannot replace a therapist that's why we need a psychologist a person who will understand our feelings and who will help us to deal with it reason number eight why people can create healthy boundaries and reason number eight is because we are afraid to be judged by god by higher power or by divine power if i am rude then one day i will be punished for that if i am uh, if i divorce my husband then people will find the truth about my perfect marriage if I report uh, domestic abuse to the police, people will feel pity for me and I will, and they will judge me. I don't want to be ashamed of my situation. So uh, people are afraid that uh, God, higher power, divine power, society, group of friends will judge them. So something bigger than me will judge me. And often people... Uh, Often uh, people don't know who will punish them, but they are afraid of punishment. We are afraid to be judged by society, by culture, by our friends, by the group that we belong to. And they have a webinar uh, which uh, is, uh, I don't remember the exact name, but uh, the webinar where I talk about family laws, universal family laws, and one of the law is called the law of belonging. Everybody wants to belong to a group, to a family, to a group of friends, to a group as a culture, Russian, American, French. Uh, so, and because of that, we are afraid to be judged and to be re rejected of this group. So, I highly recommend you go and find uh, this webinar. I will try to find it and leave link below this video. The law of belonging. 
fear of being rejected. Next reason, reason number nine is low self-esteem. And uh, low self-esteem and low self-confidence often stopped us from saying no. Because we have low self-esteem, we are afraid to speak up for ourselves. We are afraid to look stupid. And it's easier for us to be quiet and to keep our emotions and feelings inside. If we did not receive a sense uh, of self-worth in our childhood, if our parents did not tell us what that we are beautiful and smart, if they did not provide us uh, with a sense of security, then we have low self-esteem and low self-confidence. And we are unable to say no. We are unable to protect our interests and to create healthy boundaries. Our parents told us millions of times do not be selfish, uh, we, that we should think about others and we should not be rude to other people. Most of us probably heard words like shame on you, uh, don't embarrass me, I don't need your opinion, nobody ask about your opinion, um, nobody ask what do you think, nobody cares in this situation, what do you want? Like Many of us heard a different variation of, the, of those words. So, for many, many years, we have learned uh, to keep our mouth shut and we live in fear of punishment and shame. That's why we cannot say no. And reason number 10 why people cannot uh, create healthy boundaries is because we don't know what to do when someone is violating our boundaries. This is simple. We don't know what to say. We don't know uh, what words to use, what phrase to use, how to say it, when to say it, and how to react. Uh, even uh, if we know that person is violating our boundaries, even if we know that something is wrong, but how to reply, what to say, we have no idea. That's why we don't say no. And now I would like to talk to you about two types of boundaries, reactive boundaries and proactive boundaries. And reactive boundaries are our emotional reaction to the situation. When a child is screaming, crying, throwing food on the floor, throwing toys, a child is saying no. No, I don't want it. I will not do it. A child is protesting. And... Often, uh, a child does not tell us what he wants, he just saying no. And this is normal for, uh, for a child up to six, seven years old. This is how children learn uh, how to protect their boundaries, how to protect their territory, their toys. And parents' reaction is extremely important during this period. Uh, parents should, should teach a child that it's not okay to scream, it's not okay to throw food on the floor, it's not okay to break things, it's not okay to bite other uh, people, or it's not okay to um, hit other people, but it's okay to say no. If you don't like something, you should say no, you should speak up. You should not hurt other people, you should not scream, but you should be able to speak up and talk about your feelings and parents uh, should teach actually the child how to speak up how to find the solution in difficult situation how to negotiate and how to find a compromise but parents often miss this second part they punish children for screaming they punish children for being rude uh, they do not teach a child how to protect the boundaries and the child is learning that I should not scream, I should not show my negative feelings, I just have to keep it to myself. And as a result, uh, a child learns either a victim role or he becomes a selfish narcissist. And the person with the victim type of personality it is a person who gets upset from small things, a person who creates a drama, a person who slams the doors, a person who manipulates, lies, cries, creates conflict, and always blame 
the other for his problems. And at the same time, this person suffers a lot. These uh, people often come to therapists because they suffer. They feel that uh, nobody appreciates them, nobody cares about them, nobody understands them. And often uh, a person with a victim type of personality develops psychosomatical symptoms, high blood pressure, anxieties, constant uh, stress, and uh, living in constant stress and anxiety can uh, bring us to to bigger uh, medical issues. The second type, if uh, a person, if the parents did not teach uh, a child how to behave, and uh, they allow him to do whatever he wants to do, and then we might have, as a result, a narcissist uh, person who behaves aggressively, uh, often abusive, and this person can physically hurt others or he can physically hurt animals, or he might use an abusive word, like psychological abuse. A narcissist manipulates. Uh, a narcissist does not respect the opinion of other people. He believes that he can violate laws, he can violate rules, he can uh, be rude and aggressive. But if other people violate his boundaries, if other people break his rule, the rules, then he becomes cruel, cold, and violent. Reactive boundaries always based on emotions. When I scream, it means that I'm mad. If I feel ashamed, I can cry and manipulate and blame others. Uh, when people disagree with me, I have to prove that I'm right. They have to agree with me. And some narcissists uh, can say that they regret about their reactions later. But if a person does not know how to manage his anger, if a person does not know how to respect other people, it does not mean that you should forget, forgive him. It does not mean that you should ignore his rude behavior, even if he regrets about this later. Uh, you should not sacrifice yourself, your desires, your dreams just because another person does not know how to control his anger. Uh, so the second type of boundaries is proactive boundaries. And proactive boundaries are when a person chooses his reaction. Everybody has a choice and often we forget about it. You should, you should make your choice based on who you are, who are you talking to, is it a family member, is it your boss, is it your co-worker or is it your neighbor. Uh, you should make your choice based on the result that you want to achieve at the end. Do you want to keep your job or do you want to keep your friendship? Do you want to be do you want to keep your family relationship or not? And the second uh, element uh, that's very important that you should consider is, is it the first time when this person is rude to you? Or he did it many times before? You always have a choice. In any situation with any person, you have a choice. And during the eight weeks of healing um, the inner child of the online training, you will learn four ways uh, to respond to rudeness and five ways to find a solution in any situation. And if you would like to learn more about this training, uh, please click the link below this video uh, and you can go and see topics and like program for all eight weeks of training. If you like this video so far, please click like. Please let me know in comments. Your comments is extremely important to me. Don't keep it to yourself. Uh, if you like this video, please share your thoughts, your ideas, and click like and subscribe. Okay, uh, healthy boundaries. Anybody can learn how to create healthy boundaries, how to say no, and you can learn this too. The longer we use our old behavior patterns, the more we suffer. You can continue to live in resentment. You can continue to suppress your inner anger. You can continue to play a victim role. 
You can remain to be silent. You can swallow your pain and hope that one day it will be a miracle and you will be free. Or you can change your life and heal your inner child and heal your childhood trauma. And reactive boundaries uh, uh, also always lead to addictive relationship, to pain and to frustration. And I'm offering you to learn uh, how to use proactive boundaries, how to heal your inner child, how to get your self-worthiness back, how to work on your um, pain and uh, work on your self-esteem and self-confidence. And love, life moves forward. Even if you stay on the same level, level life moves forward. And by staying on the same level, you're actually drawing deeper and deeper down. And one day it might be too late to create a successful career. It might be too late to have a baby. It might be too late to quit smoking because you already have cancer. So this is your choice. You can continue uh, living in your current situation or you can work on yourself and you can heal yourself. If you have dreams, your desires, if you don't know how to achieve them, then probably your inner child is afraid. And if you did not see my first webinar, it's absolutely free about the inner child, who he is, how to notice your inner child. The link will be below this video. Click the link and learn about your inner child. So your inner boy or inner girl does not want you to speak up for yourself because he is afraid. And as a result, you cannot achieve your dreams, you cannot achieve your goals, you cannot have the life that you really, really want. You cannot create healthy boundaries, healthy relationship. And if your child is afraid, then your self-esteem is low and you cannot live the life that you deserve, the life that you really, really want. And today I would like to offer you a meditation is a guided meditation that is called my inner house and this meditation will help you to evaluate your boundaries and understand yourself better it will also help you to see how do you present yourself in this world and um, before we will do meditation i would like to give you a short overview of the exercise so you will know what to expect so at first I will ask you to relax and I will guide you through the relaxation process. And then I will ask you to imagine a house. And you can imagine any house uh, and we're not gonna go inside the house. Uh, in this meditation, we're gonna look outside. Anything that you see outside uh, will be extremely important. And don't worry, if you see yourself inside the house, I will guide you and I will ask you to go outside. And then I will ask you several questions like, uh, how big is the house? How tall is the house? What do you see around you? Do you see neighbors? Uh, do, you, do you have a backyard? And all those questions. And then mm, at the end of the meditation, we will discuss the symbols uh, of this uh, practice and we're gonna decode the image that you uh, that you see if you, you've seen in this meditation okay so uh, find a comfortable position make sure that uh, nobody is gonna disturb you for the next five seven maybe ten minutes uh, turn uh, off your phones Make sure that uh, nobody will call you, text you, and you're not going to be uh, distracted by any sound. Close your eyes. You can keep your eyes open. Uh, this is up to you. I recommend you to close your eyes, but if you want to keep them open, if you don't feel uh, comfortable with closed eyes, you can do it with open eyes as well. Allow your body to relax. Take a deep breath in and out. And another deep breath in and out. And the third breath in and out. 
Allow your body to relax and let your subconscious mind guide you. As you go deeper into the relaxation, any noise and sounds will only help you to connect with your inner world and imagine images. Allow your body to relax more and more, deeper and deeper. Relax your shoulders, your elbows, relax your wrists and every finger on your hands. At some point, allow your chest to relax. Your breathing might get in deeper and slower, deeper and slower. Relax your abdominal muscles. Allow the wave of relaxation travel down to your belly. Relax your legs, relax your knees, relax your ankles, relax your feet. At some point, start relaxing your back muscles. Relax your lower back, your middle back, your upper back. Allow all the muscles along your spine to relax. Relax your neck, the back of your head, your temples. Relax your forehead, eyebrows. Relax your cheeks jaw and relax your eyes. Staying with eyes closed, you can hear my voice and imagine images. And now imagine a house. It can be any house that you've seen in your real life or some imaginary house. Anything that you see is good and important. Now, please notice how big is your house? How tall is your house? What material does it make of? Can you see the roof? What color is it? What shape is it? Flat, pointed, or any other shape? What is it made from? Does your house have windows or balconies? If yes, how many do you see? Do you see any blinds or curtains? What does the front door look like? Is it big? What color is it? Do you have a key from this house or not? What do you see around the house? Is there any fence? Does it have a big fence or small fence? Is it solid or transparent? Look carefully and try to notice all the details. Does your house have a gate or entrance? Now, 
try to imagine that you are going around the house and try to inspect it from each side. Take your time and actually go around. You might notice that some sides of the house or some sides of the yard is closed. Just notice, what do you see? When you're walking around the house, try to notice where your house is located. Do you see any neighbors, any other houses around or not? What is your general impression of this house? Do you like it? Do you want to live in this house or not really? Look around. Try to remember all the details. And find a comfortable place where you can complete this guided meditation and return to your room. Open your eyes, look around, name three objects that you see. You can stretch, you can touch your body, your arms, your legs, make sure that you get back. And uh, please write in chat or write in comments below the video, what did you see? And how do you feel right now? This is very important. Give me some feedback and I can give you my feedback on your feedback. I highly recommend to take a uh, color pencils, market crayons, any coloring tools and draw the house that you saw during the meditation. So you can connect one more time to this picture and people who have already signed up for the premium and VIP package of the upcoming training you can email me your pictures and we will discuss it later in details and uh, if you're gonna watch this video later in if uh, not in live but uh, not not during live broadcast you can uh, click pause right now, uh, stop the video, take uh, pencils, markers, crayons, draw the house, and then continue watching this video. Because right now I will give you some um, information about the symbols of this meditation. Okay, so the decoding of the meditation, the fence. The fence is the symbol of your personal boundaries. Today we were talking a lot about boundaries. And the fence is the symbol of your boundaries. How tall uh, are they? How thick are they? How transparent are they? How your boundaries look like? Uh, when you uh, were next to your house and you were looking to the outside through the, through the fence, were you able to see the outside world or not? Maybe fence was blocking your view. So the fence is the symbol of the boundaries that you have in your life right now. If you did not have a fence, it means that you are not protecting your interest, your boundaries at all. It means that you allow other people to use you. It means that you cannot say no and you don't know how to say no at all. So if you don't have fans, it means that your boundaries are absent. You don't have any boundaries. 
the front yard the front yard is uh, the symbol of how you present yourself in this world for example people who have a perfect uh, front yard in the meditation they have a perfect uh, facebook page they have a perfect instagram page they have amazing pictures uh, and when you look at their instagram page it's like wow this person is living uh, some uh, magical life but the front yard is only the presentation of the house so your account on social media is the presentation of your life and your front yard in this meditation is the presentation of you in this world how do you present yourself in this world um, the house itself the shape the color and the roof all those elements uh, represent you your mental health uh, your anxiety level and basically this is how you see yourself in the world uh, if you had the key to the house it means that you know how to connect to yourself you know how to connect to your inner desires and you know how to connect to your true feelings uh, windows and balconies windows and balconies represent how do you communicate with the outside world and uh, mostly with the people who are close to you so fans is mostly with the people in general with other people in your life but windows and balconies is your is your family members uh, your husband wife boyfriend your kids and uh, if you allow them to be part of your life then you probably have windows and windows are not closed are not locked like you can see some something through them you can see a little bit uh, of the house inside so you allow your close family members to be close and to be in a um, close deep connections with you uh, the area behind the house the hidden territory represents your secrets your fears and your inner conflict and any uh, psychological traumas that you might have something that you are hiding from other people and if you were not able to walk around uh, the house then it means that there is something that you are ignoring you're trying to hide it from yourself you're running away from your own fears you don't want to face them you're high you're running away from some pain or maybe some something in your past experience probably in your childhood if you saw a huge castle big houses uh all those uh, big houses castles uh, pointed roof uh, are symbols of magical thinking psychological immaturity you might be in your 40s 50s but uh, on a psychological level you are still a child and uh, people who are um, stuck in this psychological childhood of course they cannot protect their boundaries of course of course for them it's extremely hard to say no uh, of course they don't want to hurt other people so um, if you saw a huge house a castle uh, a disney dream um, palace right then you have to work on your inner child you have to work on your self uh, worth and your self-confidence and self-acceptance neighbors neighbors are symbol of your perception of other people did you see any fence or sidewalk between you and the other house how far uh, did you see your neighbors how close they were to your house did you like how like the distance or it was too far or too close please write in comments below the video uh, what did you see uh, and after the webinar I will read your comments and I will help you to decode it so if you would like to get my feedback just below the video write in comments what uh, you saw and your question like for example I saw a cat next to my house what uh, it can uh, what what it represents or for example you can say I did my house didn't have a roof or my house was uh, standing next to the river what does it mean 
please write your comments below this video and uh, I will uh, reply to you and help you to decode this image. And again, people who have already signed up for the premium and VIP package for the upcoming training, eight weeks of healing their inner child, you can just email me your pictures and we will discuss it later in details. And uh, before we're gonna end this webinar, if you like this video, please click like, uh, let me know in comments. This is extremely important to me. And when I see you like, it motivates me and I wanna create more and more videos. Share this video on your social media networks, on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram. Please help me to uh, spread out the world about psychology of happiness, about my business, because I, my mission is to create more uh, free uh, webinars uh, and affordable trainings that, help, that will help people to overcome their fears and uh, create the life that they really, really want. Below this video, you can find the links, you can go through the program, you can see all the topics, and please join me on Facebook and on Instagram. Uh, this is it, it. This is all the information that I prepared for you today, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you find it helpful, please click like, subscribe, and share. And again, my name is Elena Semenek, and this is Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. See you next time. Bye-bye.